Hello everyone, my friends, my loves, my family. Um, I'm glad to have you here today. This video, um, I'm, I'm so pumped to do it. So I enjoy watching TikTok. If any of y'all don't know what TikTok is, it's an app where you're gonna just be breezing through some relatively short videos. Massive variety. One minute you could see somebody doing a recipe, one minute you're seeing somebody getting ready for the day, and then you're watching like a dance routine. Okay, you just don't know what you're gonna get. Liking videos tells the algorithm what to give you more of. But a person I follow on there. Her name is Bethany Frankel. She's been famous through Real Housewives. I think she ended up being like the highest paid housewife with that whole franchise. And she's also the founder of the whole Skinny Girl brand, okay? So she's gotten on TikTok with a real focus on beauty. She'll test stuff from a lot of different brands, but it seems like the core of what she's sharing on TikTok are revelations about drugstore makeup and skincare and how it turns out a lot of it is just as good if not better than high end. Yeah, I think you may have heard that message a little bit here and there somewhere. But it's fun to watch her enthusiasm for it. She has a very frank and honest approach. Also, what I've concluded is folks like to hear rich people talk about cheap things, okay? You like to see that that person who is super rich is sitting down and saying, yeah, the Wet n Wild was really good, darn it. We like to see that because we know they have every option under the sun. So she's got a real appeal and interest and popularity over there on TikTok with her quick videos where she's talking about, you know, sometimes throwing out a few things that are great. Or she'll say at the level or above the level. Or she'll throw out a few things real quick that aren't good. And because it's TikTok, I mean, you're not always going to get a huge big long explanation on things but all in all it's fun to watch and I have really enjoyed seeing her come into so many of the products that I've raved about here and seeing her say oh that's great and I'm like yeah I, I was I've been talking about that too for a while so I thought I would round up in this video some of her best recommendations that I've seen her make on TikTok so I'm gonna start out I actually only have my serums on today and I'm gonna use my holy hydration face cream this is my kind that has the SPF in it. She was doing a video on good as high-end drugstore moisturizers and this was one of them. It's rich, it's creamy. Personally, I use the Holy Hydration without the SPF fragrance-free every night before bed. That is my nighttime moisturizer, my loves. So yeah, seeing her talk about one of my long-standing faves, I was like, that's that's one of the best picks that I know about that she's given. Um, so I'm incorporating it into this video. And you know, I don't have a product for every step of the face routine that she's talked about that I've been super in tune with. But as I look around here, I've got quite a few of the steps, okay? There are a couple of foundations that she has talked about a bunch. One of them, she was like on a set and talking about how she had her makeup done for TV and this foundation was just incredible and she was getting so many compliments and questions about what her makeup was and she's like it's this and it's the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Dewy. So I'm a big fan of the matte version. I like the Dewy as well. Both versions are tremendous foundations. They've been out for a while also um, but I think she's probably caused a little resurgence in the popularity of these. Maybe I've contributed a little bit as well but I mean I've been talking about these so much over about the past year, year and a half so it was interesting to see her come into how great that is as well. And also she's talking about Neutrogena Healthy Skin. And this was another one that I kind of recently rediscovered and she says, Neutrogena coming in hot. And I'm thinking, honey, Neutrogena's been staying warm with this one for years now. This is the one I'm using today. I have it in Buff 30. Lightweight, super pretty foundation on the skin, often compared in the OG days of YouTube to NARS Sheer Glow. So I'm just dabbing this around on my skin. It does not have a pump. I mean, that tells you how long this has been around. A big bone to pick that people have with certain Neutrogena things. I know Alme as well. You know, sometimes it's shade range. Sometimes also what you will find if you do a lot of shopping in store, the brand may possess a larger shade range, but then it's not well stocked in the store, making that full range harder to possess. You know what I mean? Um, but we're going straight into another recommendation that she had, the e.l.f. Total Face Sponge, which I do believe this is the closest drugstore thing to a beauty blender. So I totally totally agree with her on this recommendation. She didn't say that specifically, but it has a texture on the outside that is most like a beauty blender, um, but it's shaped like a real technique sponge. And I'm just going to blend in my foundation with that. It is a truly beautiful foundation. It's lightweight. It looks super natural and skin-like. It's called Healthy Skin, and I think that's a very on-point name. Going over my zit. I had a one-two punch of zits on my chin over the weekend. I did a lot of sweating this past weekend. We went to that Cardinals game where the girls performed and then 
um, hit up the zoo the next day and the air was not moving at the zoo and my little portable fan ran out of charge. There is that super pretty Neutrogena Healthy Skin Makeup. If you apply it with a brush, you will maintain a little bit more of the coverage, but this sponge is just so good and it's again definitely one of the top things that she has talked about and recommended. I got a bun going haywire up here. And not everything she talks about is drugstore, by the way. She investigates a wide variety of brands, but I just feel like some of the most interesting stuff she has to offer and kind of the basis, like the underlying moral of what she's saying is like, there's a lot of drugstore stuff that's just as good as high-end and a lot of people are just kind of getting the wool pulled over their eyes, you know? So um, my next couple of steps, I'm just going to throw them on and then I'll be right back. I just applied concealer um, because I didn't have a really good recommendation that I'd seen her make on concealer. Granted, I haven't seen every single thing she's ever done. I'm sure I've missed some stuff here and there, but I just didn't have in my mind like some amazing concealer where I was like, oh yeah, I totally see eye to eye on that one. So I use this Incognito concealer. I love this pairing, the Incognito from Wet n Wild and a a little bit of Rimmel Stay Matte pressed in with a powder puff on top. And the powder puff I use for that is this one from e.l.f. A recommendation that I really liked of hers that I wasn't yet using and like she caused me to go and get it was using the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser in the 148 shade as a contour or a cream bronzer. Um, I'm going to use it today and I'm actually going to blend it in with my sponge instead of a brush and see how that goes. But you guys just saw me talking about this like last week. So it swipes on super easily, and I feel like it's the comparable experience to those contour wands from higher end brands like Charlotte Tilbury and whatnot, and it really bronzes you up. Sponge is doing well, getting it worked in. You gotta make sure you're getting it well into that hairline. Oh, there's a cat. Hello. And then right in here, trying not to pull down, but just kind of blend, if not pull up. You don't want that coffee sugar. And it does blend in super easily with a brush, don't get me wrong. I just wanted to try a different method today. So as you can see, I'm bronzed up. I'm a little bit lightly contoured. It feels like very little added weight to the skin and obviously no additional powdery look on the skin too. And it's just quick and easy and kind of fun to put on. So one more reason why Maybelline Instant Age Rewind, like I always use it as the concealer. I love that brightener, light pink shade of this stuff, but had never tried it as a contour. So she got me onto that. A couple of high-end things that she did a video saying, these are really worth the money. And I do agree. I think they're really phenomenal. Um, the Patrick Ta Blush Palette, and also she mentioned the Patrick Ta Eyeshadow Palettes, and these are so much fun. I actually think they were in a video where I talked about products that are fun to put on, and I enjoy the layering element here. What you get in this palette are creams and then powders, and these are all sold individually. Okay, so if you can't find this palette anymore, you can still find the duos in She's a Doll, She's Vibrant, and she's baked, okay? I'm gonna use the she's baked combo today because that might be a little bit questionable to some people, like how dark is that really? It's super pretty. So I go in with this brush that I like to use for creams. It's a Sephora 56, it just happens to me and be a mini version. And I can dab that on. And this shade actually has a surprising amount of rosiness in it. So I'm just gonna blend that kind of on the apple of my cheek and up. So pretty just with the cream and you don't have to layer them every day. You could just like choose any single thing in this palette and run with it because there's so much pigment and they're so enjoyable to apply. But what I have noticed is that anytime I do do the layering process, I got great staying power. So you got to build your cream blushes. I mean, these can all be really intense. You got to build little by little. You can always add but you can't take away. I'm sure we've all heard that phrase regarding makeup. Picking it up on the brush, dabbing it in with absolute ease, and then in comes my e.l.f. powder blush brush, and I can close that window, which we love that feature, and I'm going to go down here to the powder version of She's Baked. Super pretty and surprisingly rosy, right? I told you guys. That color shears out, and it's so pretty, but it is kind of toasty as well. So good old Patrick Ta and his blush. I mean, major winner, high quality, love that palette so much. It doesn't look like I put down any specific brow things that she's talked about, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows and then we'll get to the eyes. I use my Wet n Wild Retractable Brow Pencil and NYX Control Freak Brow Gel, and then like Bethany said, the Patrick Ta eyeshadow palettes are incredible as well with their texture, their pigment. It's just an absolute pleasure to work with this, and I believe she may have been holding up the first um, major dimension palette, the one that's more bronzy, and the only one I have 
have is the Major Dimension 2, which I just personally swear by these tones. I love it so much. I'm going to go ahead and do just a quick look with this today. It's so much fun to layer up these mattes, play with the shimmers. It is a phenomenal palette in every way. So I'm going into that second matte shade and we're just going to load up that crease. I feel like I haven't heard Bethany talk about as many eyeshadow recommendations. Like, I don't know that she's gone full force into some of these brands the way she has for, like, foundation. Maybe I need to do a video on my recommendations for her, and maybe by some amazing chance she would stumble upon it and be like, oh yeah, these are good too. Just continuing to work with that first shade I put my brush into. It's just light and rosy and a really good started out crease color. Then <clears throat> I'm going to use a different brush and while it's bare just kind of buff over that edge make sure it's all pretty soft. It already is and then I'm going to go to this color which has just a little bit of peach in it and it's such a pretty highlight because it's just not so light that it creates a stark contrast and it's just really really pretty and very smoothing. Then I think I'm going to go into this shade right here it's a little bit of like a deep rust. Definitely got some reddish vibe in there, reddish brownish rust. And just let that come to play in the crease as well. Where you first put your brush, the most color goes. So that's why I went to the crease and then you see me kind of blending and letting that shade lift out just a little bit. These are such easy eyeshadows to work with. I've got to say, they blend just incredibly incredibly well. Patrick Ta, man. I've tried other bits and pieces from his line, but the blushes and the eyeshadows are just tops for me. Do I need to get the first palette he put out? Or maybe something fun's going to come up for holiday. Who knows? Um, you also have two creams over here, which makes it fun too. Um, if you want to layer up one of those, I sometimes take this dark one and before I go putting dark shadow in my corner, I first layer up that cream and it's just like a beautiful intensity. You can just use your finger to dab that there. The top cream is like a soft dusty rose. It's really pretty too. But a big thing about this palette, it's like fun with texture. Huda palettes do that well also, you know, giving you some options. And I love a good deep and dark outer corner. So I'm going to this darkest matte right here at the end. I feel like I'm flying through this look. Like I'm, I'm not taking a lot of time. I'm not turning it into a big long drawn out thing, but the shades just blend really easily and they make so much sense together. The color tones that were chosen here, it's like the easiest things to just kind of layer one onto the next, not hard at all. I would really want to put Bethany onto the Profusion eye brushes. Small pointed was the brush we were using for the crease earlier. Uh, the flat brush that I used was a Morphe brush. I link to every brush I use down below in the info box. But here I just have a little bit of that darkest shade on the brush. And I'm just really making sure that all hits the crease. And whatever did get to the crease is nicely blended. You know what I kind of feel like doing with this one today? Because I feel like every time I've pulled this one out, I do bring in the glimmer. The, gl the glimmers are so great in this. But I kind of want to do all matte today. Yep, I said it. All matte with the Patrick Ta. It's an option I always throw out there when I'm talking about this palette, but I've never done it on camera. So I'm going back to that first shade that I put in my crease. It's that one right there where my brush is. So I'm putting a little bit of that right on the center of the lid so it can kind of fade onto the deepest shade. And then we're going to take Little Miss Buttercream over here and just let that come from the inner corner and merge onto the rest. And it's just smooth as silk. Try it sometime with your Patrick Ta palette. Just use the mattes. It's still super satisfying. Really nice. And then, you know, Maybe grab a little bit of the deep shade again. Softly line that lower lash line. So easy. Bingo. There's my eye look. I love it. I mean, it's just an everyday friendly contoured eye, but with a little richness there on the outside. I love it. I just adore the tones. And part of what makes this palette easy to use, uh, the textures are really good, really easy to build up. 
blend in with one another. That's the first reason why. But secondly, the shade gradient is so easy for one to just very seamlessly merge into the next when you're applying all those mattes and building up your look. And then you can dab on kind of a coordinating um, shimmer shade, whatever you want to do on the lid, however you want to play that. It all just works together so well. Next up, I'm going to go to a product that, man, I mean, I couldn't agree more. It Cosmetics Superhero. Love it so much. It is my life greatest of all time mascara. It's the goat, as I've said, and she was doing a get ready with me video where she kind of acknowledged how awesome this was. So I'm going to apply that with my look today. I'm not doing any special liner because I, I haven't taken note of any great liner that she's talked about. I'm using my Shiseido eyelash curler here, by the way. That's my favorite. Get them all nice and curled and then hit them with some of this and that curl will last all day. And part of the magic of superhero, which I just said in my Ulta 21 Days of Beauty video, but it builds fast. Literally a few passes through the lashes and you've got them dark, thick, standing at attention, lengthened. Um, if you're willing to just build it for a few more seconds, I mean, it's absolutely the ideal lash. And then it goes and wears well all day and doesn't flake and smudge off. Holds the curl. Really incredible mascara. If you have curl challenged lashes, you need to give yourself the gift of this. And like I said, it is on sale. Um, during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty half price. Now there are a couple of things I guess I'll just talk about here while I'm doing my eyes. A couple of things I don't have up here. They're down in my bathroom, but I will pop up pictures. The Tropic Glow Whipped Shea Body Butter. So that's a tree hut item. And I love that Tropic Glow stuff. I have that scent in both the scrub and also the body butter. And it does smell amazing. So many people have said that that's like the drugstore alternative to the Sol de Janeiro Bum Bum Cream, you know, that original one in the yellow packaging. And I don't currently have that, but I have that scent of their body mist. And I really like layering up the two because they do smell so similar, that Tropic Glow and the Bum Bum Body Mist. As Bethany would say, it's on the level, <laughs> you know, it just, it's so good. It builds quick, it doesn't drop the curl, it thickens you up just awesome. I'm going to go ahead and use my Cali Ray Come Hell or High Water. I like this exclusively on the lower lashes because it never goes anywhere. Like it's a tubing mascara, so it's made from different stuff than Superhero. And even though I really do overall trust Superhero, I kind of conserve it more because I only use it on upper lashes. And then I put this stuff, put that down here no smudging. And also I feel like this gives the lashes a little lighter look. I don't love like going super heavy on my lower lash line and Superhero would build that up in a hurry. But here I just get that light kind of deepening of the lashes, little bit of thickness. But the other cream she mentioned was the Sol de Janeiro Bomb Dia Bright Cream, which I love that scent. You guys know if you've been with my channel, it is just delicious. It is a delicious scent. I want to be associated with that scent. And I want to be like, I bought the body spray. We used up a small one because my girls like that mist on them before they go to school. I found a larger size in that mist and that's what we've been using from now. Like I am all in on that scent. So I thought it was funny she mentioned that too. So I think I've gotten, I've mentioned everything that I put on my list of the stuff that I'm really seeing eye to eye with Bethany on makeup wise. But the last thing is this Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink. This is number 10 Lippy. This is yet another thing as I was talking about sublines and how good Superstay is. This product from Superstay is really phenomenal. Let me get it on. It goes on looking like a lip gloss, but overall it's like basically a more modern kind of formulation of a liquid lipstick, I think. You're going to put that on and it's going to like semi set. It's not going to get to that completely dry place, but it is going to wear really well. And the wear down of the product, you know, as you wear a product like this is kind of an all day experience, right? It's not like, okay, I put it on, I ate breakfast and it's totally gone. No, it's going to be hanging around, but you are going to have a gentle fade throughout the day. And that fade actually looks really decent on the lips. It's going to stray a little bit from what it looks like now. And you do have some shine. You will continue to have some shine, but it's hard for that to really come off in a big way. Like here, I just dabbed it. And if that were gloss, I'd have a ton of color. Here, I just have a little color coming off. Okay. So yeah, basically they've created a really long wear liquid lipstick 
that has a shiny finish that has moisture in it and it's going to retain that moisture instead of going totally flat it's going to maintain some of that and as some color intensity does fade throughout the day it doesn't do the weird thing of looking like you've just got this rim around your lips all right it's really a good product i've been meaning to try some more shades but this one in number 10 lippy i think is super pretty um, kind of a soft red or a deep dusty rose is another way you could look at that but yeah guys that's my whole face coming together with what i believe are some of bethany frankel's best recommendations that she's made on tiktok a few of them were high end because she will talk about that as well so the patrick ta the it cosmetic superhero but you will see her also mentioning a lot of drugstore gems and i truly believe that's why she's so popular she is a person who's very wealthy and she's getting on there with the realization that drugstore makeup can even outshine high end in a number of areas so thank you guys so much for taking time to watch i hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you've seen some other great recommendations that she's had that maybe I've, you know, missed the video here or there. If there are any other good tidbits from her that you want to share, put them in the comments section. And let me know if she found out about it first or if you already knew about it. Okay, I'd be interested to see that too. Thank you so much, friends. I will see you again soon. I love you. Bye.